Greetings and welcome to the well. My name is Dave Householder, blessed to be your Bible teacher. And today we are going to talk about the Balm of Gilead. And you might have heard that phrase. It's a common spiritual hymn. But where does that come from? It comes from Jeremiah chapter 8. Now let me describe what's happening in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a prophet in Hebrew, a Navi, someone who bubbles over with the word of God. And their typical phrase is, thus says the Lord. They're actually like a Bluetooth speaker for God, if that makes any sense. They don't make up these words. These words are given to them, and they are a conduit of God speaking to people. And far from just being fortune tellers or people who tell the future, they are forth tellers, people who speak into the present, generally to those in power. And it's not pleasant when the prophet shows up because the prophet often has a critique for the leadership of the country. And so you've got kings, you've got prophets, you've got priests, you've got sort of division of, uh, of authority, kind of like we have three branches of government in the United States. In Israel, they had priests in the temple, they had kings ruling the, the land, and you had prophets then speaking for God. And these three sort of worked together, sometimes in opposition checks and balances, you might say. Jeremiah here in chapter 8, verse 21. I weep for the hurt of my people. I am stunned and silent, mute with grief. Is there no medicine? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? So what is happening here? We are looking at 587 BC and the destruction of the first temple. And the end of 400 and some years of rule of kings in Jerusalem, going all the way back to Saul, then David, then Solomon. Actually, David was the first to reign in Jerusalem. But uh, the Israelite kings who reigned there, the temple that was built there by Solomon. And this was uh, a nation that lasted for quite a while, a second level power below countries like Egypt and Mesopotamia and Persia, but definitely a strong power in that area and lasted for a long, long time, but then ran out of gas and started to disintegrate. Why did it disintegrate? Because it lost its unifying principle. And its unifying principle was its covenant with the Lord and the idea of one principle, one superordinate principle, which was that covenant. And the image or the metaphor for departing from that was idols things that took their eyes off of that unity. And it is so important for any civilization in order to keep chaos at bay. It's important for any civilization to have that superordinate principle, some kind of thing which holds everyone together. Because if you don't agree on at least one big thing, it's hard to disagree politely and in a way that doesn't rip the society apart. And Basically, here, Jeremiah was looking at Judah being ripped apart in Jerusalem and the whole culture of what was going on. And this is just heartbreaking for him. Is there no balm in Gilead? And Gilead was known to produce this, this medicinal balm that came from herbs. And he's using this here as a metaphor. Is there no healing for my people? And the African-American people of the United States when their lives were ripped apart by all the things that were happening back in the day, came forth with this song, this spiritual, there is a balm in Gilead. And it's a very familiar tune, but it's coming out of the same sort of pain and hurt in the culture. And we look around us now and we see lots of division. We see a lack of a unifying principle and the unifying principle for those of us who are Christians is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that sounds real pious to say that, oh, it's, it's really about Jesus. And if we all focus on Jesus, things would be great. And to people on the outside, it doesn't sound all that great. But what we're talking about when we say Jesus must be the, the principle around which we gather is that he personifies the connection between the spiritual and the physical and carries the ideal characters of what a human being can aspire to. And so having 
that as our unifying principle, there is no better one. And a sense that this spiritual, human, physical, spiritual, ideal version of what we can be and what human beings can focus on and aspire to is essential for a culture to survive. No matter what label or name you put on that, something like that has to pull people together. Jesus even said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men, all people unto me. And that is something which we need to, to think about here. If we totally secularize as a country, if we totally throw spirituality out of the public square, we're going to have nothing but dissension. And what's happening in our country will mirror what happened in Judah and Jerusalem in 587 BC. And we will cry out, is there no balm in Gilead? So I would just encourage you to think about why it's so important to have that unifying principle around which we can all gather and maybe not all agree exactly on what that means. I'm not saying that we should have a, a, a state which is run by the church or anything like that or by one denomination. We have different ways of looking at our spirituality, but we have to agree that there is a focus point of some kind. This is what's kept the Jews together for all of their history. They've always believed, as it says in Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is a singularity, is one. And Jewish people disagree on a lot of things, but they don't disagree on that. And that has held them together through persecution, through all kinds of trouble, all of these years. So before we throw out these unifying principles, let's think really hard about keeping them and bolstering them and teaching them to our children. That's the good news for today, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.